So hi everybody and welcome. I'm Kirsten Winkler of KirstenWinkler.com and today I got questions for Nathan Parcells. He is one of the co-founders and also the CMO of uh, InternMatch. Welcome Nathan. Thank you. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, having me back I guess. So I look forward to that's talking right. a little bit more about our progress. That's right. As um, we learned uh, many more interesting things uh, about InternMatch and um, sort of um, the way um, you're pursuing, um, let's get right into today's topic and um, tell me more about this new campaign of Find Your Focus. What is it and for whom is it? <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Um, so yeah, Find Your Focus is something that, it's a campaign that Intermatch just launched last month, um, which brings sort of C-level um, executives from different companies directly to college campuses to talk um, about their experience in the professional world, what they learned, how they got to where they are, and what are the tips and tricks in their specific field that a student could be successful with. Um, with the goal of them being, you know, we, we talked to them about being extremely brutally honest about the process. Uh, what were the biggest challenges you faced? Are you happy with your career? Were there points when you weren't happy? And, and this is information that we feel students don't always get access to, um, and we want to make available. And to have it come from, you know, interesting speakers, people who, who they might look up to and can relate with these different challenges because, um, I think it's it's just such an important part of transitioning from college into the career world is to know a bit more about what a career might look like and to get that feel from someone who, who understands. And so um, to say what it means, I guess we've had two speakers so far. Um, we've had Dave Chappelle, who's you know now the, the CEO of uh, TeachStreet.com and who's been uh, active on uh, EduQuest, I believe, and uh, who you know. Um, and then also uh, we, we've had Mike Sue, who's the VP of product at, at Break Media, mm -hmm. and um, another great company down in Los Angeles. And both of them, uh, beyond being you know, executives at great companies, are also really interesting speakers who students relate to, and that's something we seek out in the speakers we bring to campus. That's right. So I watched uh, Dave's talk, and uh, of course we... Um we are in touch, and uh, he is so kind to um, coming on my um, on my review ad show. And of course, um, I did um, an ad request um, with him on 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 Teach Street. But um, um, I think he he is a very interesting um, just conversation partner from right. his experience, and now also the experiences with with Teach Street. So you can learn a lot. He is always very honest, also about things um, that are not developing that well, or where they had to maybe pivot a little bit. So, um, and I suppose um, that. Um, the other speaker you had is um, as um, well for or as suitable for for that audience of uh, college students as uh, Dave um, has been, of course. So, yeah, I mean, how well, do you, how do you find them actually? It, that's a good question. I mean, some a lot of them are within our network, mm -hmm. but like when you talk about it, you know, we know who can tell a good story because I think a lot of students might go to an event. Where you could bring in, you know, the, an executive from J.P. Morgan and have them talk, and they might be interesting person to pass a resume to because you're really interested in working there. But they might not have that dynamic of being honest and transparent and interesting to students. Um, and so there, there are people who we've met in different uh, events and through our, our our connections who we know particularly will relate well to students and, and sort of. I mean, Dave is a great example. Um, the day before going in to present, he, I think, put out a, a Twitter message asking you know, his followers and his audience about you know, what suggestions they would give to students. And you know, I think one Twitter follower yelled out to him, you know, tell them to go to the beach and smoke, you know, go smoke more pot down at the beach. And Dave you know, started the presentation on, with that note from a Twitter follower. Um, basically saying, you know, that is one, you know, route you can go, but there, there's just so much more to school and about finding the career that you're really passionate about. 
Um, and so that honesty, I think, is what breaks through to students and gets them engaged in this process and gets them to learn more and actually to be active about thinking about careers. Mm -hmm. And so those are the type of people we, we pursue in bringing on board. Um, I mean, I think Dave, in his presentation, went as far as putting up a slide that had his pay over the course of his career at, from Amazon uh, to some of the nonprofits that he worked with um, to Chief Street. I think he said the only part that wasn't entirely accurate was that it should have been negative when he first started his company, uh, Teach Street, um, when he was doing some, some bootstrapping and some self-funding. Um, but I think that honestly really relates well to students. And, and Mike Sue was the very same way down at um, UCLA. He talked about how his first company um, that he got involved with IPO'd, his second one that he thought was going to be really successful was mm -hmm. part of the bubble and just didn't make it, and then how he shifted gears and started writing comic books for a point um, in his life, um, started a business around comic books, and why he did it, because it was a passion of his, and, and what that meant for him, um, and, and then all that before getting to be the VP of a major company. And so um, I think a lot of students are lost in this process, and we find um, uh, speakers who we know can, who have thought really actively about the pursuit of a career that fits for them, mm -hmm. and that's sort of the same mentality we like students to think about um, when they're using InterMatch, don't only apply to the big name companies, but apply to those that maybe are more on the fringe interest of yours, mm -hmm. and use the internship period as a way to explore what's really meaningful for you. And I think um, it's a very um, important point what you mentioned, who who actively thought about uh, which way for them to go and not necessarily um, it uh, has always been just a linear pursuit of a career but who then um, well also took the, the the risk we have to say of uh, becoming an uh, entrepreneur maybe not um, as a first step um, of their career but um, to to maybe also show students that it's not only um, you start at point A and in three years or five years you will be at point B, but that there is um, many uh, yeah important steps on the way um, that may look for somebody uh, for for some people not always like very focused, but uh, the experiences you make um, can be and I think will be very valuable for um, your later later startup then. So, um, yeah. Mm. I, mean, I mean, I think a lot of people call it a career path, and in our work and talking to experts who are very high up in the field, it's always looked more like a career web and, and winds in different ways and ways that, that people don't typically expect, and people make a lot of different lateral movements in their career to explore new things. And so we try to highlight that, you know, InterMatch gets onto campus a lot and hosts our own events about, with, you know, in conjunction with career centers or different student clubs, just trying to talk to students about some of these ideas. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we do is we look at different leading figures in business and nonprofits and try to understand, like, where they started. And people don't always know that, that someone like Bill Gates, you know, interned at the Congressional Finance Committee before you know, dropping out of school, becoming one of the most prolific uh, business people of all time, and then starting the, the largest nonprofit. Um, but, you know, people are not always certain that what, what path they're going to end up with while they're in school, just like they're not certain maybe what major is the best fit. And um, giving them, uh, you know, that insight that, that even someone as you know, successful as Bill Gates started off in the political career, I think... Uh, definitely helps in that process, and so it's the same thing that we do with the Find Your Focus speakers. It's, it's Dave coming in and saying that he's worked at, you know, the nonprofit world, he's worked in the startup world, he's worked in the, the big tech industries, and here's what I liked and didn't like about each of those uh, pieces. And so I guess the, the sort of feeling is we're trying to make it to be a bit of a TEDx for professional speakers. It's this idea that that TEDx, you have interesting slices of, of, of of knowledge in really specific fields, and we want to get to, with this speaking event, um, actionable advice for students that they can walk away from, mm -hmm. um, feeling like they know a specific field better, feeling like they know the career process a little bit better, and feeling like um, they 
they are more comfortable with tackling those next steps, even if they are complex and challenging for most students. I um, I agree. It's probably um, in your career that um, you should more focus on on really finding out more about your talents and what you're really good at, um, which isn't necessarily always just in the same job or even in in the same career when when I look back uh, well I studied law but um, at university I had a catering business then I had something in e-commerce well and now I'm in education uh, okay that's a long story <laughs> short and and it's not um, well so to some it it might not look that stringent of course I want I I somehow knew quite early uh, to where I wanted to go or that at least not um, the typical 9 to 5 employed job was something right. for me but uh, of course during uh, or for some years um, I had sort of more this uh, feeling of seeing really what I'm good at and uh, right. growing this and and then see what possibilities um, open um, yeah to to myself then and and then really end up of course in in doing something you're passionate about and uh, you really like so we, so we need to get you in our next speaking series <laughs> when you're when you're stateside to come and present at a school I think that you just told a great story there and one that that we, we definitely believe in. So um, let us know in advance next time you're planning a trip to the West Coast and we'll, we'll set something up at one of the universities here. <laughs> Great. So, um, um, so from, from, two, from, from two gigs, um, and um, what was the feedback like on, on the student side? It was, it was extremely positive. So um, something that's kind of interesting is that Students are, you know, they're having the time of their life at school to a certain degree, right? That's, that's sort of, it's an opportunity to go and explore everything that's, you know, whether it's music, friends, um, doing extracurriculars, people are there to find what's rich. And so it's not always um, easy to get a huge audience at, at different events on campus unless maybe you bring some pizza and different food to help kind of yeah. bring them into, <laughs> into the room, which we tend to do. But um, once they got there, I think a lot of students go to a number of boring lectures and they leave with, you know, maybe a few facts that they wrote down, but not not feeling like, you know, it's, it's hard always to get students to come out to learn about careers just because they're so used to dry um, conversations about what that process looks like. And um, both the reactions at, at UCLA um, and at the University of Washington where Dave spoke mm -hmm were extremely positive. Um, there was actually a lot of tweets going out on the Twitter stream afterwards of people saying that was one of the best uh, speeches I've heard. Um, at UCLA, actually, someone said that Mike was the best speaker he had ever heard. And you know that's a great school, so he's probably heard different speakers there. Um, so that was really positive. And we just want to keep building on that um, when we talk about you know coaching some of the speakers who come to campus about what they should be talking about. And so um, coming up, we have. Uh, this next week, Manish Arora will be mm -hmm. speaking at Stanford, and he's another really interesting um, uh, product manager. He's been in the Valley for a long time. He worked at Google and then at Zynga, so two enormous companies, and now he's, he's left that and he's doing something a little bit different on it um, that, that he'll talk about, and um, he's also an investor in the area. So, again, another person with a big depth of experience mm -hmm. who can speak to both the very large company atmosphere and the corporate culture, mm -hmm. as well as um, the other pieces. But, but by and large, you know, I think students can be difficult to get always excited about thinking about their careers, and I think that we achieved uh, a lot of success in the first two events um, in, in getting that excitement. So um, we're, we, we're on the right track with that process, and, and we're, we're going to keep doing events. And we have another one coming up as well with a a VP from Hewlett Packard um, speaking um, in, in Washington State next next month. So. Wow, you have a great network <laughs> built up. <laughs> yeah. Great, and people, um, they, well, people share their their experience with the students, and so that that's definitely the driving force behind it. 
Yeah, yeah, uh, I, I think, and even if the students um, n at, at first glance um, may not, uh, sometimes may not realize the, um, yeah, incredible opportunity they, they actually get, but uh, I think um, it's probably also this uh, nice difference of, um, hearing some things from uh, during a lecture from your professor but then having actually somebody coming from the professional field and it's his or her story and uh, it really went like this so um, you you cannot say ah this is only like like theory and um, who right. know what will happen to me or, or whatever and uh, it's still some years so um, yeah yeah For, another I, mm -hmm. I, I guess sorry I mean to interrupt at all, but I, I think that's an incredibly valid point that, that school is often very theory driven and we try to bring that segue into how you apply that into the working world. Um, and each speaker comes with different stories oftentimes about how they got their first position. You know, I've talked to um, different executives, uh, someone who headed up all of marketing for Starbucks, Danny Marie Post, um, who who we, we've met with a number of times in Seattle, and she got her first position by writing in a handwritten thank you note to mm -hmm. her very first interviewer. And you know, that's some, not something, it's such a unique uh, story that segues into a great career for her, and it's not something that, that you hear about until you start talking to people and mm -hmm. you realize they started at the same level that you're trying to at uh, breaking in, and it's getting to that, that, that next stage. So it's something that we, we try to encourage. Mm -hmm. And I guess, um, something that we at times try to build into the application process for students. So something that we also launched uh, last week that's been getting some attention and, and it's been, um, I think some students have really enjoyed it, is a, uh, a application process that requires you not to use cover letters, mm -hmm. but to only use social media, video, um, blog content, Quora, um, other platforms to apply for a position. It says, you know, finding a job shouldn't be boring, it should be fun. Um, you know, just cutting and pasting your cover letter into to 20 different companies isn't really fun. And it's not always effective. And so we're trying to find ways to, to take the teachings of some of these successful individuals, share it to students, and then incorporate it back into the, the application process and actually helping students find the match that they want. Mm -hmm. I would be interested um, in your evaluation of, um, on the one hand, uh, and I mean, uh, us too, we, uh, I mean, you at Intern Match and what I do is, of course, very um, internet uh, and also social media centric. However, it's interesting to see that we both have a uh, sort of now a real life event. I have something for um, startups in, in Paris where they can basically practice their pictures in English, <laughs> which is a good thing. And um, you now have, you, you have judges, or who gives feedback on that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, we we do something um, together um, every three months with uh, Jason Calacanis from uh, this week in uh, this weekend. Uh, yeah, I saw you interviewed him. That was great. Yeah, and uh, and so yeah, he's so kind in uh, dedicating us um, one episode of his webcast uh, every three months, and uh, so therefore, yes, we we have of course we have uh, companies pitched there, and then the the three winners of the evening can can pitch him and and get feedback, um, but. Let's talk about uh, your initiative because you you then also said um, we want to really bring something on campus and uh, have something in in real life. I don't want to say that my online life is not my real life, so it's part of right. it. But having something like you are sitting five meters away from from the person. So how how important is this um, yes one-on-one -on -one contact with the entrepreneur yeah that, that's a great uh, it's a great point I think it's incredibly valuable um, students are so new to this process um, of breaking into the job world that that just a pure 
technology solution that says here are the opportunities to apply to, here's advice that you can apply to. You know, we like that as entrepreneurs because it scales out to lots of people. Mm -hmm. But for, for those who are just getting into the job process, they really need that personalized touch and um, they need to understand, you know, their particular situation. They can't always see this cookie cutter advice. And so um, we, we think it's, it's really critical. And also every campus is different and every, you know, in what their interests are and what that, what, what programs and background the student gets. And so we definitely have are full on believers of, of sort of mixing our technology platform mm -hmm. with our on campus presence. Um, and we do that in a few different ways. Um, the speaking events is a, is a big one. Um, you know, these are great, phenomenal speakers, and they, they come to a classroom of 20 or so, you know, 30, 50 students, mm -hmm. and, then, and then we put it also online. Um, the other big thing is we have uh, student evangelists mm -hmm. at, at each university, um, at, at seven universities right now, who are actual students, and they help um, go and present to classrooms, mm -hmm. talk to students one-on-one, -on -one, um, help students know that they can email us about different questions about the internship process, and again, add some that personal touch. And then, you know, we ourselves go out to campus and do speaking. And so um, I think that that one of the, the challenges when you're working with an audience who's, um, you know, facing a big mountain of a learning curve on, on how to become professionals mm -hmm. and learning that you can't just provide um, answers that, you know, this is the, the sort of, status quo online application process that has to be mixed in with some handholding, some personal advice. And um, that's something that we're always trying to, to improve and, and sort of and build out um, as best as possible with our you know, different outreach efforts. So um, I think, yeah, you hit the nail on the head with that question. There's a, it's a really tough challenge. But both from the speaker side and also from the students and um, college or university um, response to it, um, it seems to to really um, be appreciated and uh, and also needed. And uh, again, uh, a little bit um, my my feeling I had with with internship um, uh, intern match itself. Um, it is. Such of a such of a simple logic yet brilliant and very important idea. So why didn't <laughs> anyone Thank do you. it before? I that. Yeah, and um, so uh, with um, you said seven universities or colleges, um, and who are they? Um, how is it your your own university, or can they actually apply? And um, for for our viewers um, at college, or or maybe also from the um, yes um, uh, academic body, should they get in touch with you? And uh, how do you imagine going on? Because apparently you are not missing uh, speakers, so the opportunity <laughs> is there. <laughs> Yeah, um, that, that's so. When I said seven universities, uh, I meant that's where we have a very in-depth ground presence. Mm -hmm. um, we have our own interns working at those schools. Um, Intermatch itself uh, is open for all university students, and we see a lot of, of global applications as well as East Coast and West Coast of the, of the United States applying. Mm -hmm. um, and for, as far as the personal touch, you know, any student who wants to can reach me at. at Nathan at internmatch.com or just call us. Um, mm -hmm. We're very available to give feedback um, and just to to talk through the issues and challenges of this process. We're, we're big believers that every single person we can help inform how to be successful at this is mm -hmm. is 100 percent worth it. Um, and I guess the the last I don't know was there a last part to that? It was. I mean, I guess, I guess the, the different campus presence, uh, one, one thing that would be cool would be if you're at a, at a college and you've been listening to this and you want a speaker to come by to your campus and to have that happen, mm -hmm. um, feel free to email me at, at Nathan at Intermatch and I would be um, more than excited to talk through with you what kind of speaker you think would be most valuable, hear your feedback on that process and maybe help set up an event at, at your campus. So um, that's just 
something that we could help arrange. Is it open? Because uh, from the videos I learned that it was a very, um, let's say, mixed audience, at least from the years. But uh, yeah. is it more, um, let's say, I think it's, uh, it adds incredible value for, for everyone who, who thinks of maybe um, working independently and or also, of course, finding an internship and, and looking a little bit, um, as you said, beyond the, the big players um, we all know very well. But um, is it sort of um, uh, done or, or best for a particular career or can really anybody um, come and um, and get something out of it. Yeah, that's, that's, um, I think anyone who is, I think so many people just having more information, especially from the, the types of people that we try to bring to campus is, is really valuable. Mm -hmm. um, getting those additional inputs about, um, you know, this is what the trajectory looked like for me, um, because as we talked about, uh, so many of these individuals have gone on winding career paths. Mm -hmm. um, we do, with each presentation, have that person give some, like, a look at their day-to-day -day life. So for Dave, it was like, what's the day-to-day -day of um, being the CEO of a, of a, you know, growing startup company? Mm -hmm. And so if you really want to be a CEO of a startup company, there would be additional value in saying um, this person is really speaking language about, you know, the career that I think I want and want to pursue. Um, and even to the point where we also try to give some tips about how to become that role that they became. Mm -hmm. But overall, most of the speakers, you know, that's incorporated as a piece of uh, the longer presentation that focuses in on how to solve the issue of finding uh, work that you really are passionate about and enjoy. Mm -hmm. And I think just hearing from people who, who have been at it for a long time and who are thoughtful and, and understand what students, you know, the, the challenges in that process, um, I think there's a lot to learn for, for most of them. Um, we typically find more upperclassmen coming who are like really, really yeah. thinking about that issue, and that makes sense. Um, they're, they're getting Absolutely. very close to their graduation. Yeah. And for the rest of us, or let's say in the rest of uh, the world, um, we have, of course, the videos and also the presentation. Um, did you actually um, stream it live, or did you record it on, on video, which you then um, published? Um, so the, the first ones we did not stream live. We, we anticipated to do so, but there was actually um, some technical difficulties on the, on the setup. Yeah, side, that's so. the joy when you... <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it's, it's, you know... We were remote, so I was here, and the presentations were going on in Washington and, 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 and in California. But I think we found more people um, using the, the posted videos afterwards. They're going up yeah. on a bunch of different department websites of the schools. Um, and then also we get a trailer. So for those who don't want to watch the full 45-minute piece, mm -hmm. there's you can get the best highlights get as well. Get the essence, um, yeah, the, the highlights out of it. Okay, where can um, interested uh, people find the videos, so I suppose that's on InternMatch. <laughs> yep, so they're being posted on the, the InternMatch blog, so you go to InternMatch.com backslash blog, and you'll see uh, both Mike Sue's presentation, which is just, uh, he gets the whole crowd in laughing at multiple stops, and then also talks about a really, paints a really incredible picture of what his career looked like, mm -hmm. um, as well as Dave, and then um, starting next week, we will have Manish Aurora um, posted on uh, by Thursday of next week. So definitely check in to see how that one goes if you're if you're interested in what it's like to work at, at Google and Zynga and, and why someone might leave such a those golden handcuffs behind and to go do something different. <laughs> Great. And uh, um, the next live speaker will be where? Uh, it will be at Stanford's campus. Oh yeah, that's right. That's, um, um, yeah, that's so Manish is going to speak at Stanford, and then um, after that we have another, I think, at the University of Washington. Um, okay. yep. So we stay West Coast. <laughs> West Coast for now, mm -hmm. um, but we'll be, we'll be East Coast uh, in the fall. Great. Okay. So, Nathan, um, it seems to be um, a great initiative. 
I would love to catch some um, of the um, speakers live then as well. So I think I have to come to San Francisco um, <laughs> soon, at least this year. <laughs> well, we'll be having you speak. So you you let us know when you're in town, and we'll we'll get that up, and you'll it'll be live for you because you'll be uh, giving the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah, we can definitely talk about that, but uh, I think <laughs> yeah, you are very, um, very impressing um, speaker, so um, already uh, hearing them speak um, will, I think, um, teach me a lot still. Great! So thank you so much for um, coming on question, questions today, and um, yeah, it was a good talk, so continued success for um, the Find Your Focus series, but uh, also Intern Match in general, and um, it's always great um, having a talk. Thanks so much for having me. It's, a, it's really a pleasure to be able to speak to you and, and to your audience and, and share a little bit more about uh, what we're doing and, and how we hope to educate more students on their professional careers. So thanks so much for, for all the work you put in to host us here. Yeah.